Women's football in England used to be big. In the 1800s in England, football was growing in popularity massively. Women naturally wanted in on the action, but were widely ridiculed by the national press. Then, during the First World War, the men's league was suspended. Women's teams grew up in their places of work, such as factories, growing to an estimated 150 teams in the country. They played charity matches to help fund the war efforts. They were even playing international games, with the biggest team formed in a munitions factory, Dick Kerr's Ladies, playing France to a huge audience. After the First World War, the men came back and the teams reformed. But the interest in the women's game was at an all-time high, when a game at Goodison Park on Boxing Day drew a full crowd of 53,000 people. So in 1921, the English Football Association banned women's games from playing on their pitches and using facilities. They justified this by saying that the game was bad for women's health and created a scandal around the rumour that some of the women were now being paid to play. Without the structure and support, the women's game collapsed. We do know that they continued unofficially, teams often organised by women's workplaces, although so much of this has been lost to history. Then, 50 years later, in 1971, following on from the huge success of the 1970s men's tournament, Mexico held an unofficial Women's World Cup. Crowds numbered in their hundreds of thousands, and there were massive brand deals such as with Martini. The England team were blown away. We'd only ever played on um, park pitches, because that's how it was in those days. We weren't allowed to play on affiliated football grounds. And the next minute, we get off the aeroplane and um, it was instant stardom. Um, we all got changed and then we walked up, up, the, up out the changing rooms, up the slope, and we walked out onto the pitch and the, to this cauldron of noise. Uh, it gets the Mexico game, there's 90, 95,000 people there. And I think, I'm just this 19 year old kid from Bedford. What am I doing out here, you know? And it was, that was a wow moment. After the huge popularity of the Mexico Cup, the FA were finally pressed into lifting the ban. However, it took a further 20 years for them to host an official World Cup in China in 1991. Wanting to distance this venture from the Men's World Cup, they named it First FIFA World Championship for Women's Football for the M&M's Cup. Whew. Since this World Cup, the popularity of the game has been slowly pushing forward with the Olympics and increasing publicity around the international tournaments, helping to raise the profile of the women's teams. England are now in the Euro 2022 finals, just like the men's team only a year before, with games being broadcast on primetime television, receiving massive media coverage. I think the goal for the woman is too big. Do you understand me? The, for the, uh, the keeper, it's really difficult. Um, I, I respectfully disagree. Of course, there's still a massive gap between the profile of the men's game and the women's. I myself played in the Tottenham Ladies Youth Academy in the 2000s. I remember practicing in parks and rented AstroTurf spots far, far away from the gloss of the men's youth academies. But with this increase in attention, these changing attitudes and increases in funding, football is slowly becoming more accessible for everyone.